What's up guys? So in this video today, we're gonna to do a really quick look at the color grading feature in Photoshop. If you're a Lightroom user, this is 100% transferable to Lightroom as well. I'm gonna show you how I like to use this in my own work to get some pretty powerful adjustments to the light in my RAW files. All right, so I'm in Adobe Camera Raw here, which is Photoshop's raw developing software. This is what I use for my processing. If you're in Lightroom, the layout is actually quite similar now. So what we're looking for is a color grading tab. This image itself, I've already applied a quick edit to, so I'll do a before and after. You can see it was just slightly underexposed. I've brought that up, nothing too major. Now, what I would like to do is really work on that beautiful light that's in the image. This is where the color grading is great. So color grading is just, in this regard, it's our opportunity to introduce colors and hues into specific tones within the image. One of the ways that I really like to use it is by warming highlights up, for example, and this will apply even if you're a portrait photographer, wildlife, anything like that. Warmer light is just pleasing on the eye. The way these wheels work, if you're a long-term user of the Adobe products, you might remember they had sliders here initially. They changed it to these wheels, and at first it's a little bit uh, kind of unusual to use, but that's what I'm here today to show you how to do. So, what I would like to do in this image is warm up this light that's filtering in. You can see the light there, it's spectacular. But it has a very uh, muted hue. There's pretty much no color in it at all. There is a little bit, and that's because this wasn't quite in the golden hour yet. It was getting close, but not quite. So it's basically white light. Now, I like the image as it is, but I just want to show you how to use this tone uh, tool anyway. One of the most common things, and I would do it with this photo, is warming the highlights. So let's do that now. We go over to the highlight wheel. Firstly, you need to determine which color tone you want to go with. So in this case, as I said, we want to warm it up. You move this outer point to the color you may want. So I'm thinking just a, a yellowy orange color, somewhere around where I already had that point. Now, this is how we actually apply the grading is by dragging this inner circle towards that outer point. If I don't hold shift here and try to basically do it freehand, if you slip, you can see what happens now. I'm just going all over the place. Holding shift is the key. So drag the outer point to the tone you want, hold shift and you'll see that black line appear. Now when I click and drag, that circle can't just fall all over the place. And as I'm dragging it towards that outer edge you can see the saturation start to increase on the highlights and it's getting that warm tint on there so that's where we're at now as we've introduced some obviously if i keep sliding we get more if we go back i will say guys subtlety is key particularly with highlights um, you don't want to go overboard and give it that really orangey burnt out look particularly in a shot like this where it's just not the golden hour anyway but I think, you know, just warming that light up gently, something like that is just much more pleasing on the eye. You can always then adjust the hue by moving along that out of circle now that we've applied the saturation amount and you can determine exactly what tone you want to go with. One of the other things I'll often do, and a lot of people, will be to create a beautiful natural contrast with color is by using on the opposite tone, so our shadows now, using the opposite color on the color wheel. So if I've warmed the highlights, cooling the shadows. We already have that happening naturally in this shot anyway, but let's just apply it. So I'm gonna spin the outer circle around into the cooler blues, hold shift, click and drag, and then we'll get that bluer tone going into the shadows there. I'm not going to apply that too much with this image. When it comes to the midtones, this is one that just depending on the specific raw file, I may warm or I may cool, or I might leave it, but typically I'll do one or the other, even if it's just a small percentage. Let's have a look at warming it up. I think cooling it in this case will be better, but let's warm it. So we'll pull that up. You can see the difference there. So all those midtones, which are in that middle area, are starting to really get that. Uh, warmer. I don't like that because now it's blending into our highlights. We don't have that separation with the light beams. Let's spin it around to the cooler end of things. You can see how many midtones are in this particular shot. So much of the image has gone blue. I'll back that off partially. Maybe leave a, a subtle amount of blue there. So there we go. I'm going to reset these now so you can see the result if I just click this eyedrop feature. So that's without any grading at all and then that's applied it back in there. 
And again, maybe you'd back off that yellow slightly. This is why it's always good to just take your time and if anything, let it marinate, come back later. One of the you know initial ways that people like to adjust color to an image is using the temperature and tint. And I still apply that, but when you first start out, your inclination would be, oh, look at that beautiful light. I want to warm this up, or maybe it's a sunset or something. So you grab the temperature and you just start sliding it along. But what happens when you do that is we get a huge global adjustment in the image and it's warmed up every single tone there. So our color grading and essentially split toning is allowing us to just isolate and work on those different parts of the image to create way more depth and make it look more realistic. You see down the bottom of these wheels there are these other sliders. This is the luminance or the brightness of those tones. So for example, if we pull up the shadows, you'll see the shadows get brighter. I don't touch these in here. I do, I do the light work using an adjustment brush or perhaps in the global adjustments. We have the blending and balance as well. And this is just shifting how far those tones occupy the, the, um, the pixels in the frame. I don't touch those either purely using it for color work. So let's look at one more example now. I've got an image here of ice looking down on a glacier right on sunset, so just magnificent light. And there's already that beautiful natural contrast of cool and warm happening. If we open up the basic tab again, you can see some of the adjustments I've made. I've brightened up the image, pulled up the white, which is basically the light in the shot, a bit of vibrance and saturation. Haven't really touched the temperature or tint. So let's look again. If you said, oh, let's really enhance that warm light. If you pull up the tint, now all our ice is no longer blue. It's gone into more of a green. So I'm going to reset that. Let's jump into our color grading. And I would love to warm up those highlights because that light across the surface just looks magnificent. And I just want to enhance that a little bit more. And you got to remember these raw files, they can come out pretty flat. We're just trying to bring it back. Going to hold shift on the highlights, drag that into those tones. Look at that difference already. And then of course, move that around and find the tone you're after. In this case, I think going more towards the reds, the pinks, this direction here is going to work well because that is already that natural light we've got there. I would then, with the shadows, cool those in particular to just really hit that ice. And we're really working with that natural contrast. So again, it is so common. Warm highlights, cool shadows, incredibly uh, effective on the eye. And the mid-tones, we'll probably leave them, but let's just have a little bit of a look here. Well, you know what? Maybe a little bit of blue could be nice. So let's turn off the grading. That's where we were before, and that's where we're at after a little bit of grading. So there you go. Nice and simple to use. Keep it subtle. Experiment with the different hues um, and just see the results that come through. But just don't be too heavy on it because the results... They'll go down pretty quickly. So that's why, again, I like to just, if you've made an edit, just give it some time and review it later on and you might realize you've potentially gone overboard. But definitely some warmer highlights, cooler shadows will certainly be appealing to the eye. It's not always the case. There's a lot of images where I may not even touch the grading at all, or maybe I'll only do it on the highlights, etc. But it's a really powerful tool and just lets you isolate and work on individual colors in specific parts of the image. All right, guys, hope you picked up a little bit out, out of that and maybe demystified how the color grading works. Hopefully you can start applying it to your images today. Your likes and comments are always appreciated and please subscribe if you're after more of these tips in the studio and out in the field. Cheers.